Hi there, I'm Fernando Barbeiro Campos, student of the master's degree in data science at the UOC, Universidad Alberta de Catalunya, and I will be presenting you a research under the title Automatic Object Recognition for the Fashion Vertical that was tutored by Anna Bosch Rue, PhD in Computer Vision, and also Jordi Casas Roma, PhD in Computer Science. The agenda for today has six parts, the introduction, state-of-art data set, machine learning model, final results, and conclusions. Of course, the most important part from the perspective of data science might be the machine learning model, the architecture defined, and so on, but also the results are important, and all the introductory part is, must be highlighted as well. At this point, one might be wondering, but what is the fashion vertical? Fashion vertical means a retailer that designs, produces, and sells its own products without using middlemen, without any intermediary layer. And why is it even challenging? Mainly because automatic product recognition is tough. For the same product, a picture can be taken in different lighting angles, backgrounds, and levels of occlusion. Meanwhile, different fine-grained categories may look very similar, for example, royal blue versus turquoise in color. And in computer vision, we have two different tasks that are usually misunderstood or misleading, object detection versus object recognition. The detection is the existence or not of an object in a scene. At the same time, the recognition is related to a wider sense of identifying, validating, and also classifying the given object. With that context in mind, let's set our objective. It's mainly to accomplish a meaningful prediction for a multi-label dataset. Okay, this is a spoiler. Our data set is from a Kaggle competition and it is multi-labeled, which means that for the same image, we can have one or more labels associated to it. Another objective, another goal that we will attempt is to surpass the Academia state-of-the-art performance in the same challenge, which is 45% F1 score. Later on, we'll give you more details about this data set. Now, the activity planning. The, we started in March, where we conducted the definition and planning and also the state-of-the-art investigation. During April and May, we defined the design and the implementation of the project. And in June, the reduction and the presentation plus the defense. Here, the state-of-the-art I will give you some parts of background. The object recognition is a well-known task in computer vision that has been carefully discuss discussed over the last years. The convolutional neural networks, or simply CNNs, they are a special kind of feed-forward network with the introduction in the early 90s that initially they were used mainly in face detection and had written digit classification. It's certainly true that they almost faded in prominence after presenting some promising results, and they were mostly replaced back then by the support vector machines. Only in 2012, when Krzyzewski and his group they got outstanding performance results with the network called AlexNet, which was a deep learning approach of CNNs, the CNN raised again, and that was a breakthrough in the investigation so far. After this, several improvement attempts were conducted changing the architecture and also the depth of these networks, of, the, of these deep learning networks. To name a few, VGDNet, ResNet, Inception V1 up to V4, and so on. It's also true that CNNs are not a silver bullet. They have their drawbacks. For example, the amount of training data set is important. If you, if you are going to classify a cat or a dog, it must be really easy. But if you want to, uh, to tackle a niche 
for example, medicine, it might be hard to find an off sampling. Also, they ignore the position and orientation. It's called Picasso problem. We'll tackle this later on using data augmentation. And also, they are translation invariant. Uh, to name some related work here, we must to define our data set, which is iMaterialist. We are using this one because it is multi-labeled, as aforementioned, and also it's public and has enough training data, more than 1 million images. We'll see more later on. The related work with the same data set was conducted by Baba et al. in 2018, and the results is a curious 97% in the, the, uh, in the test set and 45% of F1 score. Please bear that numbers in mind because we'll compare later on with our results. Okay, cool. The data set. It was created after a conference of computer vision and pattern recognition it is an effort from Google, Wish, Malong Technologies, and also the data science community. The file size is roughly 32 megabytes, but the images are not embedded within these files. These files is composed by consists of four main files, three JSONs. There is our data set already split. And also the submission, as I mentioned before, it is from Keigo dataset, so they explain you how to submit your, your challenge. The organization of these JSONs, test, train, and validation, validation JSON. The, the train one has more than 1 million Im images, as the number of labels aforementioned as well. And the validation, roughly 10,000 images, and the test, 40,000 images. There is no NA values or any sort of weird problems. Okay, some statistical aspects of our data set. As you can see, the distribution of labels is not evenly distributed. We have several peaks here, here, and here. The, the label 66 has more than 700,000 occurrences. And also we have here occurrences nearly to zero. As, as the data set is multi-labeled and we have this dominance of the label 66, we also have his dominance here appearing with pairing with other labels, the most co-occurring labels. The frequency distribution is around it's is between four and seven labels per images. So that gives us a glimpse of how our data set is organized. So far we have been discussing a lot about images, labels, and so on, but what does images are? Let's see. Our images are from the fashion world, as you can see a jacket here, dress, from different lighting angles, and so forth. And an important insight that we can take a look when seeing an image is we can obtain information such as the dominant colors in RGBs, the palette of colors, the, the colors present in each image, and these insights, they must be important when trying to classify those in images. Cool, now approaching our machine learning model, first we need to set up our development environment. The first decision was CPUs versus GPUs. We adopted GPUs because they are more optimized for many parallel tasks and they suit the better the, the challenge that usually deep learning techniques face. And for having an environment with GPUs enabled, we used Google Cloud Platform. After training around a week, it cost 70 euros. Here is a configuration of our instance, 16 CPUs, 104 gigabytes of memory, and most importantly, four four cores of GPUs, NVIDIA, Tesla P4. Our libraries, PyTorch plus FastAI, they work 
pretty well together. PyTorch was written by Facebook and it's focused on the, the use of power of GPUs and also they provide flexibility and speed. The FastAI library, they had several free online courses, they are open source, they are more than glad to receive pull requests and contributions from the community. They are constantly constantly researching cutting edge techniques in machine learning models and usually they take all the best practices from the market and from the academia and they incorporate into their libraries. That's pretty important. Here the architecture and the steps that we followed in order to achieve our final version of the model. Initially, we had the JSON files with the URLs for the images. Therefore, we needed to download all the images. We created a script for it. We prepared the data set, converting into pandas in order to drop columns and to ease our work as data scientists. I was positive that as long as I had a sampling of every single category, 20,000 images was enough to achieve a good machine learning model. So I reduced the dimensionality in 20,000 images. After that, these three steps here at the bottom, they are the most important ones from the perspective, from the data science perspective. So I will navigate through the, some definitions here plus the code in order to show you more details. Here, talking about the loading the data plus data augmentation using the FastAI data bunch, let's take a look how it seems in our code. Here, the transformation, this is a function from FastAI, get transformation, pretty verbose as you can see, max lightning, max zoom, max warp, that is related to the perspective changes of, of the image. Here, we are defining our data augmentation. This is important to overcome the drawbacks of the CNNs regarding orientation. So we are defining some transformation, some data augmentation here. As you can see, the, the FastAI library, it has a functional style where you can read the code like a pros, for example, image list from CSV given these parameters, then this training and this validation set here group them in, a, in an item list, label them from the data site, transform using the transformation here, precise, convert them in the data bunch, which is a special type of the FastAI library, and then normalize them. And we end up having this data here. And you can show this data are the images in a which our machine learning model will train with all the transformations and data augmentation in order to avoid the problems aforementioned. Here, our validation train. Let's come back to the presentation for a moment. Okay, we just saw how to load the data, pretty straightforward, and also the data augmentation using the transformations. Let's now discuss a bit about the transfer learning technique plus the model selection. Uh, a piece of information here, pre-trained CNN on ImageNet plus ResNet 50. Let's see the code to see what does it mean. Here we are defining our architecture. Our model is based on ResNet 50. It was defined in this way because Stanford, they conducted sev several researches to prove that ResNet outperforms on image data sets. So we adopted it and here we are defining our metrics. And here this function is to instantiate a CNN learner based on our data, our architecture, and our metrics. It gives, it gives us a pre-trained CNN. It was pre-trained on ImageNet, which is a huge image data set. And with this, we benefit from someone else's work. What does it mean? We are using the knowledge acquired by another researcher and we are creating a model, not from scratch, not from zero. Instead, we are creating based on a pre-trained CNN. 
and it's out of the box. We didn't mention anything here. It's given by the implementation of FastAI. And with that, we cover the transfer learner plus the, the selection of the ResNet and some reasons of this. Now, I will discuss a bit with you this fine-tuning plus gathering the results. How did we fine-tune our model? First of all, we need to define the parameters such as the learning rate and also the epochs and so on in order to train our model for the first time. So far, we didn't train anything. We choose a good learning rate close to this steep descent here and we apply this, for example, with eight epochs in our feet. An important aspect here is to take a look at the training loss and validation loss for each epoch in order to avoid that our validation, validation loss is much smaller than our train loss because that would indicate that we are overfitting our model. Also, as you can see, our F beta is performing well in every single steps here. Another positive aspect here, we are training only in our top layer, just in our top layer that is our ResNet 50. A possibility is to unfreeze the other layers and train fine-tuning in the whole model. It's precisely what we are doing here. We are unfreezing the CNN layers plus the ResNet 50 layers and train on all of these layers. Here we repeat the process of learn, learning rate finder, finding again and we train in more eight epochs and as you can see our model is becoming better and better without overfitting it. We repeated it, we repeated it, changing a bit the data, the size of the images, the transformation until we get our final model version. Let's see now how did we gather the, the final version, submit and how we got the results. To do this, we just predict on the test data set, we format as expected by the submission, the CSV, and then we submit through the Kaggle API here. And the results will be similar to this. It's not possible to see the results beforehand only in the web page of the submission, of the cargo submission. Here, our final F-score, our best final F-score was 0.64235. That would guarantee us the position 11th in this challenge here. It's a great score considering that here we have experienced data scientists and also group of data scientists, PhD students, and so on. And it's a great result comparing also to the, the best score of the academia that was 45% in F score. So it's a, a, an astonishing result here. The product generated, it's more tangible. If we generate a product instead of just seeing an F score and so on. So I created this small web application, this, this simple web application where we, you can upload a photo and see the results of the categories predicted. As you can see here, a man wearing shirts, jeans and a boat or something like this. The results are the gender, the patterns, the category and so on. The same for this picture here where a woman is wearing possibly a swimming gear. Uh, sports brass, flannel, and so on. Let's see this online. How does it work? Uh, this is the application deployed on render. Let's select an image here. I don't know this one. Okay, this wom woman is wearing a skirt, shirt here, sunglasses. Let's see the results. Well, pretty accurate, I guess. Plush, possibly related to the skirt material sleeveless well as you can see her arm is here it was sleeveless it could be considered okay flannel possibly the material of the shirt pretty good let's choose another image here randomly well this might be 
a bit difficult. Let's see, because there are two people. Analyze. Okay, let's see. Uh, neckline off the shoulders. Okay, they are the shoulder. Their shoulders are free. Sports breast positive result here. The woman is wearing a bikini. It's sport breast, as of course. Shirt not precise. As you can see, they are not wearing shirts. So this one uh, it was not that good. The prediction, but the flannel related to the material. So it's the overall. Result is good, although it's not 100% precise, of course. Okay, with that, the conclusions, the lessons learned, the drawbacks. As you could see, the library is pretty straightforward, but you don't know exactly what is happening under the hood. For example, the function CNN Learner, unless you read the documentation, you won't be aware that it, it is instantiating a CNN pre-trained learning and so on. So you don't know every single time what is happening under the hood. It might be a drawback. And also it might cause some misunderstanding, especially when you got stuck, when you get stuck in a problem, for example, with unexpected errors, it might be difficult to find the cause. In the last drawback, you usually rely on documentation from their websites and some forums. There is no material, more formal material, such as books and so on. But on the other hand, it also presents several successes. The framework it is handful and provide out-of-the-box solutions, especially to speed up this process of building a new model. Also, the transfer learning technique made our process really is really smoother and easier. I doubt that we would create a, such a great model without this technique. Uh, the top-down approaching of not being aware of every single small blocks that we are building is also beneficial, especially if you are in a rush, if you want to deliver a product really fast, this top-down approach is really, is really beneficial in these terms. And the results, they talk by themselves. Okay, future investigation. I just read that an approach of implementing heuristic for optimizing the F1 microaverage score was possible with this kind of approach. I didn't have the chance to test it, so it could be a future investigation in order to improve the model. And also, I think that we could adapt the model for the version of the, FIS of the, EO of the year 2019, that is the just released, ver released version of the same Kaggle competition for this year. And it would be an approach for the future investigations. Here the references, Beba, Kaggle, PyTorch, FastAI, thank you so much for the material and also for the materials present in the thesis itself. With that, thank you so much. I, have, I, I hope this session was productive and interesting for you as well. Thank you so much.